when I was about 17, I went to see a neurologist. And then he was the one that said I had the pressure points that were all knotted up. And he tried the muscle relaxant painkillers. And I went to a counselor in Simcoe. When you talk about 17, you talk about school, you talk about your friends in school, you talk about your life at home. And I went to her a few times. We talked about my anxieties. We talked about social anxieties. And um, so she took me out to a restaurant to eat. And I'm thinking, I don't can't afford to go to a restaurant to eat. First off, like, are you paying for it? <laughs> Let's get you out. Oh, that doesn't help, okay? I don't care. If you have social anxieties, well, I don't know, maybe to help some people. But really, you have social anxieties. Okay, for me, you could take me out to a restaurant every single day of my life, which I wouldn't want to do. And it's not going to make my social anxieties any better. Um, anyways... I started to cry one time when I was there, and the next time I went back, as soon as she saw me, she took the Kleenex box and sat it right there, and I went, okay, that was just so embarrassing. You know, it's embarrassing enough to cry in front of a stranger, but you really think that crying in front of somebody who's a counselor would be fine, but it was really embarrassing the next time I went there, and she just took the Kleenex box. As soon as she saw me in the doorway, she took the box out over there, and I thought, I just, that was it. I was done. It was like, it wasn't helping anyways. She's, you know, anyways, um, and personal opinion, she's kind of like, I don't know. She, uh, when we were leaving the restaurant, there was two men standing there talking. I think they were some, I, I'm thinking they had something to do with the restaurant we were in. Anyways, we had to walk right by them to go out and they looked at us. Like, that's what happens. You walk by people. You, I go to Tim Hortons, use the bathroom. Everybody turns and looks. Why? Because they're sitting there talking, and that's what they do. You go in McDonald's. I go in McDonald's, use the bathroom. I'm not working. Everybody turns and looks. That's what people do. And, of course, we're walking by, so they looked at us. If her and I were standing there talking, and a man and woman went by, or two women went by, or two men went by, I mean, you're standing there side by side talking. Yeah, you look at the people going by because that's what you do as humans. But anyways, so we walked by them, and they looked at us walking by, and she goes, oh, she goes, who do you think they were looking at? I'm not sure what she really meant by it, whether she thought they were checking her out, looking at her. I don't know, like, I caught the, like, the little glimpse of the guys, like, they weren't checking us out. We walked by them. Anyways. If you're standing by a building and you're waiting for somebody, you pretty much, you look at people when they walk by. You know, whatever. Anyways, the people look at people. They look at their clothes or the whatever. They didn't look us up and down. They looked at us walking by. Anyways, enough of that. Um, I went to relaxation sessions at um, Ensemco. And they were meditation things where I laid on the table and the whatever her title was sat in the chair and she would mentally guide you through being oh, relaxing, relaxing the muscles, tighten your hands, relax, tighten your face, eyes, relax, tighten your jaw, relax, tighten your arms, relax. You know, you work down through the whole body. And then she'd do, you know, picture yourself in a meadow, laying in the grass, da-da-da-da-da, relaxing. I just felt really, really stupid, okay? I didn't relax. I just felt really stupid. I think maybe if she hadn't turned her chair to face right towards me, laying on that table, that would have helped. If she would have sat over and not been facing me, I probably would have done better if she had like, not faced me at all and had been turned away. Probably a lot better. She put her chair right there facing me, and then, you know, she's sitting there looking at me. And uh, I just felt really, really stupid. It wasn't relaxing at all. I just felt really dumb. And I, but I tried, and I did it. And, and then she gave me the cassette tapes to take home to, and I did. I listened to them. 
and I did the visualizations and stuff at night and and uh, I, I don't know I, I enjoy it I still do it I always have done that I still do it to this day there's tons of them on YouTube but uh, don't lick me look at this I'm gonna slide down here <laughs> anyway this video is gonna get too long he slid right down off me with his body um, <clears throat> And then up at the hospital, they used to have this program or this area. You went into, you laid on the bed, they put nice hot towels under your neck and back, and you laid there. And you had curtains drawn around you, and there was beds and beds and beds. You had the curtain drawn around you. So there's noise and things going on and people moving. <clears throat> it set a timer, and you lay there for whatever, 10, 15 minutes with the hot pads underneath your neck. And then they would come put that TENS machine on you. And then you would just lay there with the TENS machine on you. It really was very relaxing because it's one of those hospital tables with a sheet over it. And there's so much commotion and noise and, you know, hospital lights. And But anyways, I went and I did do that. And uh, I did buy one of the TENS machines myself. But they actually shut off the signal of pain going up to your brain, which isn't always a good thing. Um, I used it at home. I remember around 20, I had um, a, a reading, heart meter reading whatever thing put on my heart, and I wore it for a week because of heart palpitations and problems and I went in and I had a stress test thing and I can't remember the results. I remember years later I had a bone density test and I remember I had to go for a test for my stomach where you swallow the little white pills and swallow the white drink stuff and then you have x-rays on your stomach. I don't remember what that was for but you know years ago I tried to get help I saw the neurologist when I was first married. I remember her name, but I won't say it again. She, they just give a pill. They go through the body and check do you have feeling in your feet, and feeling in your cheeks, and feeling in your legs, and you know, and then they give you a pill. That was the second neurologist. Then I went to the third one in Port Dover, who told me I should take piano lessons, and everybody has headaches, so. And then I didn't go for any counseling or anything until I left my ex and I thought, I'm going to try again, see if I can get self-esteem, see if I can feel better, see if I can get over my marriage for one thing and how he talked to me would be nice. And, you know, you have a psychiatrist who's some foreigner, I couldn't understand one word he said. But he didn't talk to me anyways, it's just put you on some pills, gave me to a lady to talk to who was not a counselor, she was a nurse in the hospital, she had no counseling training, who said, that's nice, that's good that you're doing that. Yes, very nice you're doing that. <laughs> you know, well you seem to think about things you're going to do. And I saw him again couple months later and you know I think they changed my pills like three four times over and over and over again they made me vomit oh they made me vomit I vomited and vomited and vomited I was sicker than a dog on the pills I think he tried like Prozac and Zoloft and a flexor or something like that and I threw up continuously I said I can't stay on these because I can't function I can't make kids lunches I can't drive the kids to school I can't get out of bed I can't get away from the toilet they said, take them for 10 days. I said, I can't take them for 10 days. I'm throwing up the minute I start taking them. I got to stop this video. It's going to be too long again.